Let's rise up, please. Let's talk to the Lord tonight. Trust Him in Him. Believing that He has a solution to every problem of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. A great God in heaven, I will bless your name for the good things you are still doing today. I will thank you because you have called us together so you can bless us. And we pray that today your hand of blessing will reach out to every one of us and where there is any problem, any unsurmountable mountain. Father, we pray you will deal with them in our lives in Jesus' name. Where there is darkness and confusion, we pray that the light from your presence will shine forth into our pathway. And we will see through the tunnel or through the darkness in Jesus' name. We are trusting you. And we know that you will never disappoint. Therefore, Lord, we pray. Whatever needs we have, we pray that as we bring them before you in prayer, believe in you that your promises are still yes and amen. We pray that you will fulfill those promises on our behalf in Jesus' name. We are trusting in you. We are depending in, on you. And we are believing, O oh Lord, that you will get rid of the mountains and the problems in our lives, even from this very moment in Jesus' name. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. It's always a wonderful thing for any human being in life to have the great power of God to depend upon. And as we're here tonight, it's a wonderful thing to know that we know God. And that this God is a powerful, mighty God. And that as He helped people in past generations, in this generation, we find out that God does not disappoint. And that his promises are still yes and amen. Paul the Apostle, writing to believers at Philippi, and through them, writing to us today, tells us that my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What Paul the Apostle said was inspired of the Holy Ghost. That is, the Holy Spirit, who knows the power of God and all the available resources of God in heaven, revealed to Paul the Apostle that no matter the need in any generation, no matter the need in any period of time, the Holy Ghost emphasized and reaffirmed in the heart and life of Paul. And he gave him this message to give to the church saying, My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yet, this statement is solidly built or based on scripture. Obviously, Paul the Apostle himself, looking at every generation and looking at how God supplied the needs of every generation since the earth or the world began, he could confidently say, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And at times like this, in time of difficulty, in times of strain and stress, in times of austerity and lack, we need to know that this is not the first generation where there will be need or scarcity, austerity, or where there will be difficulty 
in having ways of meeting our needs. And as we look at the past generations of men and women, and we see how God supplied their need, we will have to believe the word of God that in this generation as well, our God is able to supply our need. When God created this world, before that time, there was no land, there was no sky, no sun, no moon, and no stars. And yet, out of nothing, God brought out everything. And that same God who was able to bring out everything out of nothing, who created the whole of the universe out of nothing, and he supplied the needs of that day, of that moment, that same God has not changed. And this same God shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If there is nothing around you, nothing within the family, out of the nothingness around you, God can supply everything that you need. When God had created Adam, and Adam was placed in the garden of Eden, looking around, there was nothing that Adam needed, which had not been created, which had not been made. Something he needed immediately in his surrounding there, or he needed around him in this whole wide world. Our God had supplied all his need. Not long after the flood, you will know that God called Abraham. And God told Abraham that when he calls, he's able to supply whatever need may be in the life of that individual. When God called Abraham, there were a lot of needs in his family. A lot of needs that could bring shame, that could bring confusion of heart. But God called him out and told him to look up and see the stars of heaven that he made how many they were, if he could number them. And in that, that God told him, he told him that he was able to supply the needs of his family and give him children as the stars of heaven for multitude. It is that same God that we still have today. And it says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. If you still remember the story of the children of Israel, they had needs. Being in the wilderness, a lot of needs in their lives. The need for protection, the need for preservation, the need that they will be able to eat adequately, and the need that they will have clothes that will not be worn out, the need of settlement eventually. Think about all the needs as they continue to follow after the Lord. The Lord supplied all their need according to the, his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. That experience of the children of Israel adequately, abundantly illustrates what Paul the Apostle was writing about. There wasn't anything in the wilderness through which their need would be supplied. There were times they needed water and there was no water naturally in the desert. But God supplied their need according to his riches in glory. And they needed food. And there was no food in the desert. But God supplied their need, according to his riches in glory. To the time of the Lord Jesus Christ, there were times his disciples had need. And he always supplied the need through the prayer of faith. And it is this part that the Lord is bringing before us today, that my God shall supply all you need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Even though this message is applicable to the whole church in the whole world, the message is applicable to the local church and to every individual in the local church. The message was originally written to the local church at Philippi. And the Lord is bringing this message to our local church here, telling us that Whatever we need, as individuals in this local church, our God shall supply. And he will supply all our need, according to his riches in glory, by Christ Jesus. When he says, he shall supply, that is, in the future tense. But there is something we call, 
immediate future, the near future. That is, if God is to supply something in a few hours' time, that's the near future. That's not like saying He will supply it 40 years from now, or supply it 70 years from now. But this is talking about the immediate fulfillment of the promise of God for these people. That God in the immediate future will soon supply all their needs. When it says all, the Bible means all. Which means whatever area of need you may have, our God will supply all your need. Not according to the situation you find yourself, but according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. This fact of God's provision, God's abundance, remains the same today. The statement was true about God many years ago. But since God has not changed, the statement is straight true about God even today. Maybe you are sick today and you have need of healing. When the hospitals run out of pills and medication, heaven never runs out of the healing virtue. It's still able to heal your body. Maybe it is that you are oppressed and depressed. And when they run out of hospital beds in the psychiatric hospital, our God never runs out of power to deliver. Or it may be that you need material things in your life. And the markets and the supermarkets may run short of the need of your life. That probably you don't even have the money to buy. Or the money is there, but what you are looking for is not available. But when markets and supermarkets run short of the needs we have in our lives, heaven will never run short. Because my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Let's see what he did in the past generation and what he's still able to do today. So we can put our trust, our confidence in the Almighty God. Deuteronomy chapter 2, from verse 7. For the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all the works of thine hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. These forty years, the Lord thy God has been with thee. Thou hast lacked nothing. As we are serving the Lord today, we need to realize that as God has called us, He doesn't call us to serve Him in vain. He has called us so that He can take care of us. He has called us because He knew He has something to give us that the world could never give us. He says over here, the Lord thy God has blessed thee. He also said these forty years, the Lord thy God has been with thee. Two things we need to notice here. That we need to make this God our God. Because all these blessings of the Lord will be ours if we are not strangers unto God. And God is not a stranger unto us. And it's very simple to become a child of God. It is not in our own power. It is not in our own strength that we become children of God. All we need to do is to show our desire our earnestness that we want this God to be our God by turning away from sin, turning away from Satan, turning away from the world, turning away from all the evils and the wickedness of our life. And we stretch out our hand, telling him to receive us, to forgive us. And because Jesus has paid the price for our redemption already, he has died for us on the cross of Calvary. The moment we believe, God becomes our father. And then we can say, this God is our God. Then he says, when this God has become our God, and the middle wall of partition, the wall of enmity between us and God has been broken down, then he will be with us and he will bless us. Do you know tonight, if this God is your God, he will definitely bless you. There may be people that live as if they have no father. They are like orphans. But the children of God, whether they have earthly parents or not, we children of God are not like orphans. This God is our God. He is with us and He will bless us. It says, 
for the Lord thy God has blessed thee in all the works of thine hand. He knoweth thy walking through this great wilderness. For the children of Israel, God knew the way they were moving. He was the one that called them out of the land of Egypt. He was the one that marked out or declared the way that they will take. And as they took the way that the Lord wanted them to take, we discover that the Lord provided for all their needs. The only problem we sometimes have in our ignorance, and sometimes, shall we say, in our weakness and foolishness, is that we hide our way from the Lord. We hide the way we take, the things we do, the paths we have away from the Lord. But we do not know that if we reveal those plans to God, if we make those ways known unto God, then God becomes responsible to supply all the resources we will need in the way that we take. That's why we always tell ourselves here to discover the way of the Lord. Because if He makes you to go through a particular way, it may be, it may look like a desert. But all the needs in the way that He directs you by, He will, he will supply. It may look like the way the Lord has directed you to take is the way of the Red Sea. But the way of the Red Sea, the way of difficulty, is better when God is there with us than the way where there is no difficulty at all. You see, God directed the children of Israel. And every way they took, the Lord directed them. And as they went through the wilderness, this great wilderness, as this passage calls it, because it was God that directed them and that told them they should take that way. He blessed them, knowing the way they were walking, and He supplied all their needs. If we want to go a particular way, we need to check up from the Lord. Oh Lord, is this the way you are leading me? It's not necessary to ask the question, is there difficulty on this way? That doesn't matter, because if the Lord is directing us in that way, He will solve that difficulty. It is not necessary to ask, will I get enough food in this way where you are directing me? That one doesn't matter. If the Lord is directing us to go a particular way, all the needs on that way, the Lord will supply abundantly. The only thing we need to know is, is God directing me to go through this way? Is this the way he has mapped out for me and planned out for me? Is this the direction he wants me to take? If he wants me to take this direction, I will lack nothing. You will lack nothing. Because our God will supply. When he begins the journey, he takes you throughout the journey. When he starts you on the way, he will take you through the way in Jesus' name. Let's look at First Kings chapter 17. First Kings chapter 17 verse 2 And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is beyond before Jordan. And it shall be that thou sh shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did, according to the word of the Lord. When, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning, and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. There is a lot in this short passage I read to you now. That I believe that if God will make us to see what He has reserved for us in this passage and in our lives today, we will never be afraid again. It, it was a difficult time in the land of Israel. It was a national adversity that came upon the whole nation. And for the joy of it and the privilege that Elijah had is that he had the word of the Lord that came unto him. How can I explain to you that in the most difficult situation in life, it may be your family, that there is so much difficulty, there is so much need. The man will not provide for the family. 
the man will not even show any provision or give anything to the children. Or the man will seem to be negligent of his responsibility that you have in this time of national adversity and austerity. There's such a great problem. Yet you need the word of the Lord. You see, the Lord wants to talk to you. He knows where the food is. He knows where bread is. He knows where water is. And if you are sick, he knows the channel by which healing will come unto you. If you are oppressed, he knows the channel by which deliverance will come unto you. When you do not have a friend, a sympathizer, a helper, you need the word of the Lord. You see, at this time, there was not enough food in the whole nation of Israel. And even King Ahab had to be going about eventually, looking for what the animals will take. And many people were suffering in the land. But even though Elijah himself did not have all the things he needed on earth at that time, but the word of the Lord came unto him. You know, that is the reason why we come here. People will wonder, how could we still be coming to church this difficult time? How could we still be coming together for fellowship this time of austerity and need? This time of lack of accommodation, lack of help, lack of job. Because we are coming here to hear the word of the Lord. And I'm not just talking about hearing preaching. I'm talking about God talking to you directly as his own child. Saying, I know where you can get what the need of your life is. I know how I can maintain you this difficult time. I know where I can hide you this difficult time. I know where I can take care of you this difficult time. The word of the Lord came unto him. You know why people take the wrong step in the day of difficulty? Because they are confused. Because everything is blank. They look right, they look left, they do not see the way they will take. They look up, they look down. They do not hear the voice of direction coming from anywhere. And therefore they take a wrong step that will land them into problem. They go from fine pan into fire. But when there is difficulty, they are waiting for the word of the Lord. He has the answer. He has the solution. When there is family difficulty, family problem, and the fire is burning, and the thunder is striking, and there is confusion, and the storm is making everything in the home to fly here and there, don't take any step, don't pack your load yet, and don't say, I will go anywhere I see. I will go. Wait for the word of the Lord. What if Elijah at this time in the day of stress and strain, in the day of difficulty and danger, in the day of hunger and confusion, in the day of darkness and enemies. If he just took a step, he will take a step into famine, into hunger, into need. But the word of the Lord came unto him. That's why we pray. Whenever we pray, we open our ears, we open our hearts unto the Lord. We know that the Lord has a solution. He has. In the furnace of affliction in Egypt, He preserved the children of Israel. He must still have a word for us today. In the wilderness, when the people did not know what way they will take, and when Balaam and Bela conspired together to cause the people of God, the Lord had protection for them. He must have protection available for us today. Even at the time of the Babylonian captivity, when Nebuchadnezzar heated the furnace seven times hotter, he was present with the people of God. Wasn't it in the lion's den that God kept Daniel? And all through the night in the lion's den, there was no hurt in him. And if God, if that God is still the same, he has something waiting for you today. But you must hear the word. You must not, I'm not talking about what I'm preaching now. What I'm preaching now is the word of God. But what I'm talking about is that you will hear the word of the Lord. The leading of the Lord. The direction of the Lord. You see, my brothers and sisters, a child of God should not just be running elder skelter. They drive us from that place, we run elder skelter, and there is a heat or a problem in the family, we run elder skelter. They are threatening us in the place of work, we run elder skelter. Wait a moment. Look up to your God. 
You are like you are not like an orphan. You have a father in heaven. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth. He knows all about your life. He called you. He saved you. And he wants to do something great in your life. Don't just run about as people with no hope. We have hope in God. Listening to the voice of the Lord, he will speak to you. And his voice will bring peace into your life. His voice will bring provision into your life. Elijah waited for the word of the Lord. You want to get married. And you say, it appears there are not enough women. Because I've been looking for women. And I say that this one is the will of God for me. They say already she's engaged. They say, I say maybe this one will be. They say already she has given her answer to another man. I say it may be this one. They said, well, she's married already. And her husband is in another town. Then you pack your load. You say, I will go where you are going. Wait for the word of the Lord. He must know the right person. He must know the right way. If we listen to him, it doesn't take time. And the word of the Lord came unto him. Or it may be that a person has got married. All the tests they tell them to do in the hospital, she has done. All the advice the doctor wanted to give had been given. All the treatment that the doctor wanted to give had been given. All that they ought to do, humanly speaking, in looking for this and looking for this and talking of something legitimate. And they have spent a lot of money. And then you say, well, I'm fed up. I'm going to... Don't finish that sentence. Don't do anything. Let the word of the Lord come unto you. This God who created the whole of this world out of nothing... There was no cement, there was no sand, there was no dust, there was no stone, and God created all the mountains, all the land. There was no rain, there was no dew, and he gave us all these rivers and oceans, all the water that we see. And there was nothing like air, all the air that the millions and billions of people are breathing now, God created everything at that time. There was no single plant or seed, all the trees, he created everything. Think of all the fish, think of all the birds, think of all the animals. There was nothing at all. Out of nothing, he brought out everything. And if you talk to God, he has not run short of power. He has not run short of love. He has not run short of wisdom. Wait a moment. The word of the Lord will come to you. And when the word of the Lord comes to you, all that you have been crying about in your life, you will find out it doesn't take God time to wipe away your tears. But you know, in our own foolishness, and in our own impatience, we say, what am I going to do now? What am I going to do now? Let God get into action. You have nothing to do. He will do everything. And so the word of the Lord came unto Elijah in verse 3. He said, get thee hence, turn thee eastward, hide thyself by the brook chase that is before Jordan. I'm going to ask you a question. Suppose God had not spoken to Elijah. Suppose a scientist, a psychologist, a sociologist, a specialist, an expert had been told to advise Elijah that whenever there is a famine, whenever there is a problem, whenever there is a scarcity, a need in your life, this expert is there. He has got a scientific certificate. He has got this uh, expert knowledge. He has been practicing from this year to this year. Go to him. What advice would the sociologist have given to Elijah at this time? Will Elijah have been directed to the book chase at this time? Only God could have directed Elijah to this place at this time. What if Elijah was to use his brain? and to use his mind and to read all the history books that he had seen before and he said i'm going to take decision but i'm educated i am a person that knows my way and he thought about this and thought about this where would he have landed he would have landed in trouble but only god can direct us when there is confusion when there is storm when there is family problem when there is a need when there is not enough to eat, when there is no accommodation, when there is no job, when we do not know where the meal of tomorrow will come from, only God can lead. And our God will lead. He loves us as children. He left us here. 
if he is fed up in taking care of us here, if he knows there is no mineral, there is no resources, there is no food again in the world for us to eat, the rapture then will take us away to heaven. But the reason why the rapture has not taken place is that he says, I have something for you to do in the world, and I can take care of you while you are there in the world. He will take care of us. Whatever we need, all we need is the word of the Lord. And it will direct us as to where to be. But look at what he told him. He said, get the hands. You know, Elijah was a real child of God. But even though he was a child of God, there were idol worshippers living in that community. And their lives were so evil in the sight of God. And God said, Elijah, I'm going to provide for you, but get out of that place. Get the hands and turn thee his word and hide thyself. You know, if you listen to God very well, it may be that the Lord is telling us to move out of a particular place. He's telling us to take a particular action. And he's saying, do the simple thing. Now, you see, when God tells us to take a step, we begin to ask questions. Sometimes we talk too much. We do not listen enough. What if Elijah began to say, God, there will not be any companion there. There is no supermarket there. There is no farm in that place. There is no restaurant there. This place you are directing me to go, I think I have an idea of what the place is. In fact, there is no convenience in that place. Who are we to be asking God questions? Don't you know that God can bring something out of nothing? Don't you know that in that place that you are looking at as a barren desert place, that angels' food can feed you in that place? Don't you know that in that place you are looking at and you are saying, what about this, what about this, what about this? Who are we to be challenging the wisdom of God? Are we wiser than God? Sometimes when God tells us to do restitution, and he says, leave that place where you are. We begin to say, oh God, if I leave that place now, what will be? What will happen? What, what, what? We talk too much. Listen to God. God is the ancient of days. When did you come into this world that you are arguing with God? What do I know? What do you know? That God tells us, this is what to do, this is what to do. And we are saying, oh God, how will you do this? How will you do this? Leave the matter in the hand of Almighty God. He knows what to do. He knows how to take care of you. He knows how to provide for you. He knows how to wipe all your tears away. If you are sick, He knows how to heal you. If you are oppressed, He knows how to deliver you. Why don't we just listen to the word of the Lord? As we listen to the word of the Lord today, He will direct us. He will guide us. And the needs of our lives, the Lord will meet in Jesus' name. And it came to pass, in verse, and it shall be, in verse 4, that thou shalt drink of the book. And I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. I want you to see that Elijah just allowed God to keep talking. He didn't argue with God. He didn't say, O oh Lord, how clean is that book? How about guinea worm in that book? I have about all those germs in that book. God said, go and drink the water out of that book. Sometimes we think we know more hygiene than Almighty God. Sometimes we think we know what should be and what ought not to be more than God. And then he said, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. That will be another difficulty for a carnal man. Because you see, ravens are selfish. Ravens are ravenous. And ravens will consume everything that they see. But it said, I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. In verse 5. So he went and did according unto the word of the Lord. My brothers and sisters, let's straighten out something tonight. There are many things we suffer after we become believers, real children of God. That we should never, never, never suffer. But our problem is this. We miss our way many, many times. We miss our steps many, many times. Even when the Lord is talking to us, we are not very sure of the significance of what the Lord is saying. 
after the word of the Lord has come unto us, we begin to use our brain. We begin to use our carnal mind. We begin to use our human understanding. We begin to put something natural or something spiritual. We begin to match the advice of man with the word of the living God. And then when we mix up everything, then we take a step which is not according to the will of God. Do you know, my brother, my sister, if from the time of your conversion, you will say, Oh Lord, in things great and small, I will never take a step except according to the word of the Lord. Our difficulties will be cut down. Our, the dangers we face in life will be minimized. The regrets we have in life will be minimized. If we can tell God and say, Almighty God, from today, I've made many moves in my life. I've been very impatient in my life. I've given many promises to many people in my life. I have turned a particular direction in my life. I've always been in a hurry. I must do this. I must go there. I must do this. I must go there. But now, any little thing I'm going to do, any big thing I'm going to do, I will do it only according to the word of the Lord. You will find abundance of provision waiting for you. Because, you know, in the way that the Lord has ordained, he has also ordained all the provision that we will need in that way. Brothers and sisters, when you wake up in the morning, even if it is for a few minutes, say, Oh Lord, what do I do today? Where do you want me to go today? Who do I speak to today? What promises am I going to make to people today? And when you are challenged by people or confronted by people, before you open your mouth to say anything, do like Nehemiah. When the king asked him, What is it? You are making a request for he said, he whispered a prayer unto the Lord is God. Before you commit yourself, before you go a particular direction, say, O oh Lord, here am I a pilgrim in this life. I need your word for my life. The word of the Lord will direct you. You will hear the voice of the Spirit of God that will say, This is the way. Go therein. And when you go in the way of the Lord, He will adequately provide for you. So you went. And he did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and dwelt by the brook chase and that is before Jordan. And the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning. And bread and flesh in the evening. And he drank out of the brook. The Lord made the timetable. The Lord determined the diet that the man will take. And he made an arrangement with the ravens and said, Ravens, you will be the one to go in the morning. Another raven, you will be the one to go in the evening. The another raven, you are the one in charge of this month. Another raven, you are the one that should be serving Elijah this month. And God made all the timetable for all the ravens. Do you know, none of the ravens ever forget his time of responsibility on the timetable of God to bring food unto Elijah. And all the time he was there, those ravens were never late. Those ravens never did anything apart from the will of God. But you know the good news we have as New Testament believers? New Testament believers do not have ravens bringing something to us. The angels of heaven have not been given the responsibility. For us in the New Testament, it is the angels of God that now come to minister to the needs of the heirs of salvation. And if the ravens never miss the timetable of God in providing for the need of Elijah, do you think that the angels of God will do any worse than the ravens in those days? Those angels will never fail. Because they are always carrying out the word of the Lord for the people of God. In Psalm 34 verse 7, Psalm 34 verse 7, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and deliver them. The angels of the Lord, they are always around you. I said, the angels of the Lord are always around you. Psalm 91, verse 11, For he shall give his angels charge over thee, not the ravens anymore now, but the angels, to keep thee in all thy ways. And those angels will carry out the word that the Lord wants them to carry out on your behalf. In Psalm 103 verse 20. Bless the Lord. Ye his angels that excel in strength. That do his commandments. Happening unto the voice of his word. 
That's why I said, as we are in this generation and period now, that is not just the ravens now, but the angels of God themselves that have been given the charge over us to do or to give unto us the needs as they will be ministering unto our needs. And as I said, they will not fail. If those ravens did not fail, these angels too that have been given charge, they will not fail. In Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. Reading from verse 13 and 14. And to which of the angels said he at any time sit on my right hand, until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all the angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? Our God will take care of us. In Psalm 31, Psalm 31, verse 19. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Here we are told of the greatness of the goodness of God. Laid up for them that fear the Lord. If you love the Lord and fear the Lord, if you are a child of God and you are walking according to the word of the Lord, the goodness of the Lord is promised unto you. It will be abundant upon your life. Verse 15, My times are in thine hand. All children of God should be able to tell God, saying, O oh Lord, I am here not by my choice, but by your direction. I am here not because I made a decision. I want to be here. You led me here. All of us who are here in this church, you have, been, you have come to hear the gospel. Maybe you are somewhere before where you are suffering, but God sent you here. God led you here. And you obeyed the Lord. You heard the gospel and you received the gospel. Why then should we be living as if there is no hope? As if we are orphan. As if there is no help. As if there is no hope. Our times are in the hand of the Lord. It says, my times are in thine hand. Deliver me from the hand of mine enemies. And from them that persecute me. And the Lord will. What do we do? That God will meet and supply all our needs. Very simple things that the Lord has marked out for us to do. You can see the case of Elijah. How God directed him in a very simple way. And what the Lord wanted him to do was only to be accepted by faith and it was simple for him to carry out. What are the things that the Lord is requesting from you and from me so that he can supply all our needs? Simple things. Number one, they come to start with a real child of God. You see, that is the beginning of blessing. And if you are a child of God already, that means you are taking that step already. You are turned away from your sin. You have confessed all your sin and evil unto the Lord. You have told him to forgive you. And you have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ who died for you and shed his blood for you. But we still have to mention it because there may be few people here that have not done that. They have not become new creatures in Christ. And they need to know so they can come into the blessing of the Lord. Psalm 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. The steps of a good man. You know that sinners are not good, they are wicked. Sinners are not good, they are sinful and bad. And we have all been that way before. Because the Bible says, All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we didn't make ourselves good. Nobody can make himself good. Only Christ can make you and me good. And if you realize your condition, and you come to the Lord and you say, Lord, I know I am not good. I know I'm a sinner, but Calvary, the cross of Christ, the blood that Jesus shed can make me good. And then you turn away from sin, you turn away from Satan, you turn away from the deeds and the activities of the world. You say, Lord, here I come, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me good, make me righteous, change me and turn my life around. Then from that moment, your steps as a righteous man, made righteous in Christ, will be ordered by the Lord. The Lord will take special interest in your life. He will delight in your ways. 
If you want to get married, he'll say, I want to direct you. I delight in your way. If you need any need, if you have any need in your life, he'll say, leave that in my hand. I want to direct your ways. He delights in your way. And then in verse 25, I have been young, now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging bread. When you become a true child of God, God will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will not leave you to all the needs of your life. There may be problems in life, but the Lord will see you through. It may appear that fire is burning on the face of the whole earth, but the fire will not burn you. It may appear there is need and scarcity all over the world, but you should not allow your heart to be troubled. If you are a child of God, the Lord is thinking about you. The Lord is going to provide for you. The Lord is going to meet your needs. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. Step number two is don't allow your heart to be troubled. Believe in God. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled. You will hear a lot of things. You will hear of the destructions around the thunder that is sounding, of the storm that is raging, of the waves of the ocean that is beating into the sheep of many lives. You will hear of people that get so fed up with life they commit suicide. You will hear of people that are losing jobs. You will hear of a lot of things that will trouble the average man. See that ye be not troubled. Because all those things will be in the world, but our God will never leave us. Our God will never forsake us. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars. You will hear of perplexity and trouble. You will hear of rumors of destructions or demolition. You will hear of the rumors and the reality of needs almost everywhere. You will hear of religious people that are having difficulties that looks unsurmountable, insolvable. But let not your heart be troubled. When you look around and everybody is crying, when you look around and everything seems dark and dreary, look up, our God will supply all our need. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, he will not allow us to be like the people of the world. He will not allow us to suffer the same fate as the people of the world are suffering. He is a caring father. He is a loving father. He will love, he will care for us. What we need is to have faith in God. In Mark chapter 11. Mark chapter 11. Verse 22. Jesus answering saith unto them. Have faith in God. As I said. When things are dark. As I said. When there is a lot of confusion. And you don't know what direction you will go again. Here is what Jesus said. Have faith in God. When in the family. It appears that. Peace is lost. Confusion is reigning. Hunger is what is biting everybody. Have faith in God. When there is fear in the place of work and there is no stability or security and nobody has an assurance of what is going to happen tomorrow, have faith in God. When in the family we look around and we say, how are we going to feed these young children? Where will the food come from? That will satisfy these children. Have faith in God. When you look at your life. And you look at it from the primary school level since you were born. And all, and all that your mother told you, your father told you. It has been from one suffering to the other. And now you have come to the Lord. You say, Lord, any hope? Or am I going to continue like this? Let not your heart be troubled. Have faith in God. When you are sick and weak. And when it appears that you don't know what to do anymore, and you are not as strong as you used to be, and not that you are an old man yet, and your heart is already not being troubled, have faith in God. When it appears to have a child that is getting out of control, or maybe a relative, a child that is having a kind of mental problem, and you don't know what you are going to do, have faith in God. Do you know if you believe in God, all things are possible to him that believeth. He will never leave you alone. To the problems that you have, he will never forsake you. In Mark chapter 9, verse 23, Jesus said unto him, 
if thou canst believe. All things are possible to him that believeth. You see, this man had prayed before this time. This man had gone to disciples to pray for him this time. The problem was still there. Maybe you have prayed. You have fasted. You have had prayer partners pray with you. And yet, the child is still having the problem. Or you are still having the problem. And maybe now you are now in a po- at the point of breaking down, saying, I don't know what to do again. I don't know where I will go again. There is nowhere, nowhere else to go. In the presence of God, we will still find our water out of the rock. In the presence of God, our manna will still come to us in this wilderness world. In the presence of God, the ravens and the angels of God are still going to bring food this time of famine. If you can believe tonight, all things are still possible. To him that believeth, and straightway the father of the child cried out, and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. Can we blame this father for crying? His beloved child was suffering. His beloved child has been thrown into the water and into the fire. There has been so many scars of uh, injury in the body of the child. And the thing was still on the child. Can we blame the child, the father for crying? Can we blame this father for staying in the presence of Jesus and saying, Lord, yes, I believe. That's why I came. I believe that's why after your nine disciples prayed and there is no answer, that's why I'm still here. Oh yes, I believe. I've prayed about this problem before and I've gone everywhere and there was no solution. That's why I've not killed myself. Oh yes, I believe. That's why I didn't throw the child into the river and say, let's forget all about it. Lord, I believe. But there's also some unbelief in my heart. Because as we have suffered from day to day, as we have gone helter skelter, as we have prayed and prayed, as we have spent all the money we have, and there is more, no money left now to anybody who is going to help us, I'm beginning to have doubt. I'm beginning to have unbelief. Help thou my unbelief. Maybe you are like that tonight, and you are telling the Lord, Oh yes, I believe. That's why I came to the service tonight. Oh yes, I believe. That's why I'm still reading my Bible. Oh yes, I believe. That's why I didn't go off to those Habalists and all the Juju worshippers. Oh yes, I believe. But because of all the things I've gone through, I'm beginning to have some doubts and unbelief in my heart. But Lord, help thou my unbelief. Do you know Jesus never rebuked this man? When you need help, God never gives you rebuke. When you need healing, he knows what you need. When you need deliverance, he knows what you need. And then the Lord took the child and delivered that child. Tonight, he will deliver you. Just have faith in God. The next point is to cast all your cares upon the Lord. You see, we are not supposed to carry our problems. They are too heavy for us. When the devil ties a load and somebody carries it, you will find that the load the devil ties is always too heavy to carry. When an enemy ties a particular load, and you carry that load, the load is always too heavy. That's why whenever you carry your mountain on your back, whenever you carry your problems on your heart, whenever you carry the problems on your mind, it's always too heavy. But we don't have to carry that load. Why did Jesus come to Calvary if I still have to carry my load? Why did Jesus, but why did Jesus get born in the in the manger if I still have to carry all my load? Why was Jesus led as a sheep to the slaughter, and he was upon him was laid all my chastisement and all my pain and all my suffering? If I still have to carry all my load, why did Jesus bear everything? He cares for us. Why are we carrying all our load ourselves? You know, when you carry your load yourself, you become older too soon. You will be a young person, but the load will bend your back. You will be a young fellow, all the problems of life will weigh you down. Your mind, your heart will become weak and infirm because of a load that you are carrying. But tonight, what the Lord is saying is that I came into the world, I came to Calvary so that all that load you have on your head, all that load you have on your mind, all that, all that load you have on your conscience, I will carry everything for you. It may even be a load of guilt, a load of condemnation because of the sin that you committed in the past. Why? Look at Christ on the cross of Calvary. 
The moment you get to Christ on the cross of Calvary and you roll all your burden upon Him, He will carry all your load for you. You know, when that load is gone off your head, off your mind, you will straighten up, you will walk, you will be free. Your mind will be free. The facial appears that never knew any joy or smile or laughter. After that load is gone, you will know joy. You will know laughter. You see, look at all those people that are carrying heavy, heavy load at the motor park. They cannot laugh. The thing is so heavy, they bend down and they are struggling and struggling. That is how many people are struggling today. There is an invisible load they are carrying. They are worried. They have anxiety. What are we going to eat? What are we going to have this way? How are we going to have this? How are we going to have that? How are we going to get well? How are we going to get strong? Cast all your cares upon the Lord. In First Peter chapter 5, verse 7, Casting all your care upon him for he careth for you casting all your care upon him he careth for you from tonight put all that load down all those things you are thinking about what will i do calvary has done everything where will i go calvary has marked out the way how will i be fed calvary has made enough provision for us all we need to do is to pray to god in faith will god disappoint us how can you ever think God will disappoint? Don't you know who God is? How loving He is? How great our God is? And no matter how long a person has been carrying that problem, the moment you roll all that care upon the Lord, He will care for you. Numbers chapter 23 and in verse 19, God is not a man that is should lie, neither the son of man that is should repent. As He said, and shall He not do it? As he spoken, shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received commandments to bless. He has blessed, and I cannot reverse it. He has not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither has he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord is God, is with him. And a shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. And as he has a it were the strength of an unicorn, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. There is no enchantment against you. Neither is there any divination against Israel. All the tongue that rises against you shall be silenced. According to the time to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, What has God wrought? Do you know what God can do tonight? He can save you if you are a sinner. Do you know what God can do tonight? He can heal you if you are sick. Do you know what God can do tonight? He can take all those nightmares and oppressions of the devil away. Do you know what God can do tonight? He can drive back all your enemies and say, That's my child, leave him alone. Do you know what God can do tonight? He can wipe all your tears away. Do you know what He can do tonight? He can remove the mountain. He can remove the oppression. And then you'll be able to testify and see what God has done. Let's rise up and let's talk to him. He's not tired of us. He has been expecting us to bring all these problems before him. He will drive the mountains away. He will drive the enemies away. He will show mercy unto his own people. And you'll be able to testify and see what God has wrought. See what God has done. Come to the Lord today. Be a child of God. Become a child of God. And let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. God will never fail. Are you a child of God? Cast all your cares upon Him. He careth for you. Cast all your cares upon Him. He careth for you.
In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Want your heads bowed and your eyes closed. A young girl whose parents cannot meet any cannot meet any need, cannot buy clothes, they even find it difficult to uh, bring to give food or the normal things and education is also being affected. I want that young girl, wherever you are, in the midst of the people of God here, just raise up your hand. God will be your provider. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bring this girl before you. Lord, you see a young heart worried about life, carrying a load of worry and anxiety too much for her age. Lord, I pray the burden, the load, the weight, you will remove this very moment in Jesus' name. Lord, as you brought water out of the rock, manna coming through in the wilderness journey, I pray that this young girl, you will provide miraculously for all the needs of her life in Jesus' name. All that she needs in a legitimate way. Food, clothing, education. Lord, make all the arrangements. Supply all the need in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. The person that has the terrible hitches in the body, I see she will just be crashing, scratching every part of the body. And it appears that insects are just biting you all over the body. You will raise up your hands. God will set you free. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray now that all through the body of this individual, you touch every part, the hitching and the scratching, everything will vanish away in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. The person that has, uh, the woman that has a problem in the breast and appears that the doctor is saying they may have to perform an operation, let's bow the eyes closed, raise up your hand and get your deliverance. Father, we know that you will never fail. Your word remains the same today. Father, what a great day this is. Lord, we pray that you will touch this woman and you will remove this problem in that verse in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. The person that has the heat and the problem in the body, not only that, the thing will go to the back of your head and it will look as if it's pulling something at the back of your head. And then you become, you feel the pain so much and the inconvenience so much. You've gone about looking for solution. You have not got solution, but you've got a solution here tonight. You will just raise up your hand. The Lord will deliver you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you send forth your healing power. In the body of this individual, heal him, deliver the oppressed in Jesus' name. Bring deliverance and freedom now. In Jesus' name I pray. The woman that is childless, but it will appear that something like snake uh, moves about on the inside. And whenever you sleep, you always see the, you know, snakes and it's uh, perennial, it's a constant problem. That's the thing that the enemy has done to always be causing this problem in your life. Tonight, you can be free. Because Jesus defeated the old serpent on the cross of Calvary. And he will, de will deliver you from the enemy. He will destroy the power of that old snake. That person, I want you to just raise up your hand. And the Lord will take care of your problem. Do you know the Lord will never fail? And if you've been looking for a child for such a long time, do you know, uh, we didn't do like this last week or even last month, but the Lord led me this way tonight. And it is because the Lord wants to roll your problem away. 
Now I want you to just, that person I'm talking about, raise up your hand. When I take authority over that thing, whatever direction, whatever source that thing is coming from, it cannot remain there in your life again. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break the power of the old serpent. And I command that all these parts of darkness will flee away from your life in Jesus' name. Lord, clear the way. Touch their body. Grant them the request of their heart. Give them the children. Lord, put a testimony in their mouth. Bring joy into the family. And all the confusion and all the problem of these years, hold everything to, away from tonight in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I want you to bow your head and close your eyes and lay your hand upon yourself. Father, in the name of Jesus, as the eyes of children look to their parents, so the eyes of your people are looking up to you. And we have seen the way you catered for the people of God in the Bible days. And that they same God will supply all our needs according to switches in glory by Christ Jesus. Lord, I pray as these brothers and sisters are laying their hands upon themselves. Where there is sickness, I command you sickness. Get away in Jesus' name. Where there is infirmity and weakness. I command that that weakness and infirmity will flee away in Jesus' name. Oppression at night. Evil powers and evil forces coming to press them down in the night. Lord, I pray you will set them free right now in Jesus' name. That adult man, adult woman watching the bed at night yet in that auditorium. Lord, I cancel that thing. The enemy said will give him that so that all his life there will be sorrow. And there will be problem in the family. And tonight, I will remove the hand of the enemy. And that thing the enemy brought into the family, I remove it in Jesus' name. Lord, that individual there that is in debt and does not know how to eat, and the little money that comes in, he has to be paying debt. He runs from place to place. Every time he comes to fellowship, he's sure to meet somebody that will say, How about that money? And the heart will cut again. Mighty God, at such a time like this, how I want you, Lord, because of your mercy and because of your love, to look down upon this individual. And Lord, since you give us the privilege to ask whatever we want, what I'm asking, O oh Lord, is that between now and next week, Water will come out of the rock. Manna will come out of heaven. And you will supply the need of this individual in Jesus' name. O oh Lord, send those angels. With all the supply. With all the money. With all the provision. And supply their need in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for this woman. That the Lord has been purged. In the midst of tears and quarrels, in the midst of fire, in the midst of beating, in the midst of trouble. And she feels there is no other solution. If I cannot go forward, I will go back. And the husband said, go your way and let me be free. There is a lot of problem. And Lord, I pray, that load that is patched, they will untie the load, they will settle again. The peace of God, the provision of God, all the things they are quarreling and fighting about. Lord, the great comforter, step into the problem in this family. Reunite them in love again in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that all over this month and this year, where there's been no joy, no smile, no laughter, from tonight, settle the quarrel. Put out the fire. Get everything resolved for this family in Jesus' name. 
all the in-laws that are putting petrol in the fire, all the enemies that are putting trouble upon trouble in that family, Lord, I pray they will stay in their houses and in their homes, and this family will be at peace in Jesus' name. That person that is urinating blood, Lord, I come against that problem. And the urinating of the blood from this very night will stop your life in Jesus' name. The woman over there that is bathing with black soap. And you think that by taking that juju soap and bathing yourself, all the bad luck, all the evil, all the uh, getting the market that is not selling, that everything will go on. The Lord wants me to tell you that if you will hear the word of the Lord and go back home, uh, go back home and bundle that calabash and all that black soap, throw everything away, the Lord said from tonight, you will see the prosperity of your life in Jesus' name. Therefore, Lord, I pray for that individual that has been depending upon the powers in the world, upon the charms in the world, upon the dark soap in the world. Oh, Lord, I pray as this person will take the step of faith and get rid of that thing. I pray, oh, Lord, the light of heaven, the power of God will be to bear upon that person's life and will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Believer, you are praised. Strengthen those who are weak. Heal those who are sick. Provide for those who are needy. And those who are living as almost there is no father, there is no mother. Be parents unto them. And be helpers unto everyone. God shall supply all our needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Thank you Lord because we know you have done it. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray.